Welcome everyone. In this video, we review some basic concepts in the treatment of AV fistulas for hemodialysis. Remember that this procedure is often called declotting. We talk about the treatment for AV lube grafts and remember that we have native fistulas and we also have synthetic lube grafts which are the ones shown here. While we focus on that type of graft, remember that the anatomical variations sometimes require other types of grafts other than the lube graft. And some of the treatment mentioned here will apply to native fistulas as well. Since we're talking about native fistulas, we should also mention the Fistula First Initiative. And while it's a complex subject, let me mention some quick facts of why the Fischler First is so important. The Fischler First was a quality initiative that started more than 10 years ago. And the reason for doing this is because the native fistulas in the hemodialysis patients have a longer patency rate when compared to grafts. They also have a lower rate of infection. So those are two big reasons why it is really encouraged that we attempt to create surgical native fistulas in the hemodialysis patient. And we should actually anticipate this before the patient needs dialysis. The reason for this is because the native fistula takes about three months to mature. And during that time, if the patient requires hemodialysis, he will need a central venous catheter. Those central venous catheters are associated with a higher rate of stenosis and infection than the synthetic graft that we're going to mention. So remember, we have two types of fistula grafts or two types of fistulas and that there are consequences to having a central venous axis for hemodialysis in the long term. So moving on to the types of lysis that we can use for the clots form in this AV fistulas, we have a pharmacological alternative, that's the TPA. We have the mechanical option using balloon angioplasty, which can cause maceration of that clot. We have a push-pull technique. We have the Fogarty catheter, and we have many other mechanical ones, such as the Trotrola device, which is the one shown in the bottom right corner. But needless to say, that's not the only device available out there and different devices might have their utility in different situations. Finally, the combined option in which we have pharmacological and mechanical treatment also makes sense since we can leverage both of those treatment modalities to the benefit of the patient. The steps involved for the treatment of an AV fistula graft involves a central venogram. And the reason for the central venogram is because we would like to assess for any stenosis near the brachiocephalic or SVC veins that might be causing problems with hemodialysis and we might not notice if we only perform a very localized venogram. Second, we should mention that the venous outflow is also a the most common region for problems in patients with AV graft fistulas. So that venogram will also allow me to assess the venous outflow and plan my treatment and the second step, which is the thrombectomy and thrombolysis of the graft itself. The third step involves what I just mentioned, that's the angioplasty of the venous anastomosis or any other lesion near the venous outflow tract which will be a very common site for problems of stenosis to occur. Finally, we use compression and perform an angiogram to see reflux into the arterial site and perhaps treat any other arterial lesions that we might have. This step is known as removing the arterial platelet plug, which will form due to a stenosis on the venous outflow. So we can have an arterial platelet plug and we can also have, although it is much less likely when compared to the venous outflow problem, we can also have an arterial 
inflow problem as the primary cause for AV fistula malfunction in a patient with hemodialysis. Moving on to the anatomy, this is a brief description and a very nice diagram that shows the cephalic vein with the problems of stenosis as illustrated by this yellow plaque here or this material illustrated in, in yellow. And we also have two types of sheath. The outflow sheath, which is actually the one on the right, is placed near the inflow. And the reason for this is because we want to point towards the outflow. So this might be counterintuitive, but remember the sheath has a name of the area that you want to treat. So the inflow sheath will be pointing towards the inflow, but it's actually inserted adjacent to the outflow tract. The loop here in purple illustrates the graft that's connecting both the arterial and the venous system. And in this case, it is a thrombose graft, which we're gonna treat. So we first start by obtaining our outflow axis. We do the central venogram like we mentioned. We probably at this point would have noticed that there's a cephalic vein stenosis. And we go ahead and treat that cephalic vein stenosis along with the thrombectomy and thrombolysis of the graft since that's the main problem and the main um, obstacle that we have to treat to get all the way to the cephalic vein and probably centrally to better assess any areas of stenosis. After we treat the outflow and the graft component, then we can take a look at the inflow using our inflow sheath and performing an angiogram towards that direction. It helps to compress the cephalic vein or the outflow in order to get reflux into the arterial circulation, namely the inflow of the AV fistula. At this time, the final step will be to remove the arterial platelet plug from the arterial anastomosis or the arterial inflow site. After this, we can perform a completion angiogram verify that our graft is open, check for a pulse, check for a thrill, and then we can use purse strings to remove our sheath and close the puncture wound in which we access. You can also apply pressure until you achieve hemostasis. At this time, you would have completed the basic treatment or declotting of an AV fistula graft.